Over the weekend, I thought of a better way to explain conditional tenses. So, if everything is still possible, then it's happening in the present, and what might happen will happen in the future. If a decision has already been made, the decision was made in the past. And so any consequences of that decision would happen in the past version of the future. That's why we used the word would. And if something cannot be changed, that means that it has been um, finished. It has been accomplished. That's why we use the perfect aspect. A decision has been made and it cannot change. It is perfect. It has been perfected. So hopefully that helps you better remember the difference between these three conditional tenses. OK, let's look at the homework. Page 28. Practice three. This is interesting. These are some of the mixed versions of the conditional. So the question very kindly gives us the list of answers. So we just have to choose the right tense and put them in. So number one. If you boil water to 100 degrees C, it, what's the word it wants? Sorry, if you heat, if you heat water to 100 degrees C, it boils. It is a general truth. There is no question of time or probability. But if you're talking about something that actually might happen, then if you heat water to the water in that pot, very specific situation to 100 degrees C, it will boil. Number two, sometimes I forget my own schedule. Habitual activity, again, outside of time. If I, what's the word that it wants? Uh, forget and look. Okay, so if I forget my schedule, I look at my appointment calendar as a habit. So there's no question of time. If you do put it into some kind of time, if I forget my schedule tomorrow, very specific time, I will look at my appointment calendar. Sorry, appointment calendar. It's a question of pronunciation. Um, we'll, I, I think we will talk about this sometime in the future, but in case we don't, appointment is a noun, calendar is a noun. If you put two nouns together to create a new noun, this is called a complex noun. It is in fact one single thing, and the stress is always in the first word only. So appointment, calendar, but appointment calendar. There's no stress in the second word of this complex noun. Number three, sometimes the cat purrs. What words does it want us to use? Pet and purr, okay. Habitual situation, if you pet the cat gently, pet here is a verb, right? To, to touch the cat. She 
purr. To purr is to make the sound that a cat makes when you touch the cat. I guess in Chinese we say fashu hurusan. So this is in general. But if it's a specific situation, if you pet the cat gently right now, she will purr. Number four, uh, I might have some news tomorrow. Uh, have and call, I'm guessing. Yes, in the future, if I have any news tomorrow, I will call you. But if it's just a habit, any time I have news, I call you, right? So if I have any news, I, sorry, I call you. In general, any kind of situation. Number five, you eat too much junk food, so it wants us to use eat and get. Okay. You, if you, in the future, so if you eat too much junk food, oh, there's an extra space. You will get fat. But if it's a fact, a predictable fact, something in general, if you eat too much junk food, you get fat. And number six, uh, again, what does it want? B and B, <laughs> great. Number six, it might be cloudy tonight. So predictable fact in general, if it is cloudy, the stars are visible. But in a specific situation, if it is cloudy tonight, the stars will be visible. Questions? All right, moving on, next one. Which one is true? OK, number one, if I had a million dollars, I would travel around the world. So does this person have a million dollars? No, answer is B. Number two, if I didn't have a bad cold, I would go swimming with you. So does this person have a bad cold? Yes, so the answer is A. Number three, if Jenny were here, she could help us. So is Jenny here now? No. Sorry, yes, is not here, right. So B. <laughs> Number four. If Henry weren't in charge here, nothing would ever get done. So is Henry in charge here? Yes. Henry is in charge here. Number five. If I spoke Chinese, I could converse with your mother. Converse is just the verb for conversation. To converse is to hold a conversation. So if I spoke Chinese, do I speak Chinese? No, I do not. Number six, if I knew the answer, I would tell you. Do I know the answer? No, I do not. OK, questions? That was pretty fast. If I'm going too fast, please tell me. OK, next one. So OK, so all of these are contrary to fact, so these are all not true. So how do we rewrite these? Number one, there aren't any trees on our street and consequently there is no shade. If there were, trees on our shade, there would be, our, our street, there would be shade. Number two, we don't have enough money to travel abroad. If we had, sorry, if we had enough money, we would travel abroad. Number three, the students don't have a good history teacher. Again, this word is pronounced history. Two syllables, liang ge history. The students don't have a good history teacher. They don't like history because of her. Okay, if the students had a better history teacher, they would like 
history. Um, also, there's a grammar problem. Well, not a problem, but there's an ambiguity here. I don't know if I mentioned this. In English, um, the, the, the strict meaning, the technical meaning of this sentence is that the reason they don't like history is not because of her. They like history because of another reason. So this not is actually negating because. It's not saying they don't like history. It's saying they like history not for this reason. If you want to say they don't like history and then give a reason why they don't like history, you need to add a comma here. 不然那个否定就会把原因否决掉 OK, number four. Sam doesn't like fish, so his mother doesn't cook it for him. If Sam liked fish, his mother would cook fish for him. Number five. The weather is bad. We can't have our usual weekend picnic today. If the weather weren't bad, we would have our usual weekend picnic today. Number six, I have so much work to do. I will not go out with you tonight. If I didn't have so much work, I would go out with you tonight. Questions? Okay, next one. True versus untrue in the present or future. Complete the sentences, column A with the clause and column B. Ah, so it's a matching question. Very interesting. Number one, if the temperature goes below freezing, has anything happened yet? This is the present tense, so nothing has happened yet. So you need either a present tense or a future tense, depending if it's a general answer or a specific answer. If it goes below freezing, this is would, so it's not this answer. He will be very cold. Makes sense, future tense. Looks like the answer is H. Number two, if the temperature were below freezing right now, so is the temperature below freezing right now? No, because this is the past tense subjunctive. So you have to choose something with the word would. We would be very cold. Seems like it makes sense. D. Number three, if the baby is hungry, so nothing has happened yet, you can say, he cries as a general answer. Let's see if there's a better answer. Nope, so the answer is B. In the general situation that the baby is hungry, he cries. Every time he's hungry, he cries. Number four, if the baby were hungry, so he's not hungry now, we need something with the word would. He would cry, J. Number five, if this were not fresh, so is it fresh? It is fresh, this is past tense. So if it were not fresh, we need something with the word would. So the answer is not C. C is in present tense, it does not match the grammar. So the answer is I, it would smell bad. Number six, if fish is not fresh. Notice that it doesn't say this fish, 
it doesn't say the fish. It means fish in general. So this is a general situation. On the right, we need something in the present tense, not the future tense. This is a general situation. It should be present tense. If the fish is not fresh, it smells bad. C. Seven. If a car runs out of gas, it stops. Seems like the best answer. It doesn't say this car. It doesn't say my car. It says a car. So it is a general situation. Uh, if on the left is present tense and on the right is also present tense. Number eight, if this car had more power, so does it have enough power? No, it does not. We need something with wood. If it had more power, E, it would go faster. Nine, if you threw a rock into the water, did you actually throw it? No, past tense. So you need something with wood. If you threw a rock into the water, G, it would sink. 10, if you throw a life ring into the water, F, or, or is it F? Yes, it's F, it floats. General situation, uh, do you guys know what a life ring is? It's the round floating thing you throw to rescue drowning people, Zhou Zhenquan. Another name for this is a lifesaver. Lifesaver is also the name of a kind of candy that looks like a lifesaver. So in a general situation, if you do this, then it will float. It floats, sorry, present tense. Yeah, ta-da, life ring. Questions? OK, next one. Which one is true? So which one matches the sentence? Number one, if you had been here last night, you would have had a wonderful time. But B, you weren't here. If you had been here, which means you were not here. Number two, if I hadn't been rude, Jenna wouldn't have gotten angry. But A, I was rude. Number three, if Anna hadn't been late, we could have seen the beginning of the movie, but A, Anna was late. Number four, if Henry hadn't fallen asleep, he wouldn't have crashed into the tree. Poor guy. But he did fall asleep, or he fell asleep. Number five, if Max had studied, he might have passed the test, but he didn't study. Number six, if I had known the password, I would have told you, but I didn't know the password. Questions? OK, so we have reached the end of verbs. Do you have any questions about verbs? All right, let me pass out the new handout.
Great. So this will be what we use for the rest of this semester. Um, I want to point something out. On Moodle, there are actually two versions of this handout. One at the very top is called Handout. The other one is in under Nouns, and it is called Handout 2. The content is exactly the same. The difference is in the page numbers. If you download Handout, it has combined both handouts into one document and the page numbers are continuous. But if you download Handout 2, which I just passed down to you, the page number begins from 1. It starts over. So uh, if you want to use the PDF, uh, make sure you know which one you're downloading. OK, so we're starting with nouns. Today we're going to be talking about countable and uncountable nouns. So English, the basic assumption is that nouns are countable. The exception is that some nouns are not countable. Two kinds of nouns are not countable. Number one is a kind of substance. Air, water. Iron. Plastic. Substance. These cannot be counted. The second kind of uncountable noun are abstractions. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later because it's kind of harder to understand. But remember for now that these two kinds of nouns are uncountable. What does it mean for a noun to be uncountable? If you have a countable noun, uh, you know, just for example, car because it's short. Every time the word car appears in a sentence, it must have something in front or it must have something behind. You cannot simply just throw the word car into a sentence. Uh, the exception is the word the. We're going to talk about the next week, but the word the does not tell you if this noun is countable or uncountable. So aside from a car, some other things you can put in front include my car, two cars, in this case front and back uh, are filled, like there's something in front and there's something in the back. Um, but there must be something, uh, you can't just throw the word out. So that's how you deal with countable nouns. Hang on. OK, now as for uncountable nouns, I mentioned substances. The second thing is abstractions. Abstractions. Are. OK, so some things are abstract. But we can count them. For instance. A worldview, that's very abstract, right? And yet we can count them. So when I say abstraction, I don't just mean something that is abstract. I mean that the grammar itself is abstract. So for example, um, again, I really don't like thinking of examples. Can somebody give me a verb? Yeah, any verb. Sorry, love. OK, I'll talk about love later. Love is very important, um, but can I have another verb? What were you saying? Can we have a longer verb? OK, I have one. OK, OK. So for example. Dig uh, to digest means to like your stomach is doing something to your food. Xiaohua. Digestion is the idea of digesting. This is an abstract word. 
the idea is not abstract, right? Digesting food is a very uh, concrete idea, but the grammar is abstract. Now, in Chinese, we also have abstract grammar, but it looks different, and that's why I asked for a verb. In Chinese, we would translate this word as the xiaohua. So, for example, um, good digestion. So, like somebody has a very healthy stomach and they can process all kinds of food. In Chinese, you would say, hao de xiaohua. And that way you know that this word is an abstract word. Now, uh, this can sometimes be hard to separate from words that mean something abstract but have a concrete grammar. For example, uh, for, for example, the word abstraction. Surely this is an abstract idea, right? To take a concrete idea and turn it into something abstract. In Chinese, we call this de xianghua. And yet, look, I added an S. It's countable. Because here, I'm not just talking about the action or the idea of making something abstract. I'm telling you that there are some words that are abstract nouns. So if you have one of these words, it is an abstraction. You can count these words. And that's why the word abstraction here is countable. So in fact, substances are also countable. The substance itself, air, water, sand, iron, plastic, cannot be counted. But the idea of substance, the idea, the concept of substance can be counted. This is a substance that is another substance. These are substances. Uh, OK, so far so good. Raise your hand if you understand. Ting dong zhuo. OK, so far so good. Let's add some complications. Complication, also an abstraction. Countable nouns and uncountable nouns are sometimes used in opposite ways. So for example, one of your classmates just mentioned the word love as a noun. This can be considered a substance. It's a kind of thing in the world. In that case, you cannot count the word love. But it could also mean the thing that I love. In that case, you can count it. I have three great loves, which means I love three things in my life. Sometimes it can also mean three people. Depends on the context. Or if we go back to car, Car can also be used in an uncountable way. I go to school by car. In this case, the word car has nothing in front, has nothing behind. Here, you are not talking about a car. You are talking about car as an abstract way to get from one place to another. It is an abstract concept. When I say I go to school by car, you're not supposed to think of any specific car. You're supposed to think of like not bus, not train, not bicycle, but by car. Uh, and then finally, um, substances and other uncountable nouns can also be counted if you are talking about a specific instance of that substance. Uh, instance in, in this case means like one example or one specific part. So um, a common example is sand. Sand is a substance. You can't count it. But in English, we have a famous phrase. The sands of time. In this case, the word sand does not mean the substance of sand. It means desert, Samo. So you might say this has been lost to the sands of time. 
in Chinese we say you want that time of history of the river. So in Chinese we use water, but in English we use sand. Water also. Um, I can't think of a. You can use the word water to mean bodies of water, like lakes and rivers and stuff. So even though water is uncountable, you can use it as a countable noun, like for specific bodies of water. So some odd words that you might come across include monies. Money is uncountable. It is a kind of substance because we live in a capitalistic society. But sometimes banks will talk about different kinds of money. Or even different currencies. Uh, in this case, it becomes something you can count. Another one you might see is. Peoples. People is often the plural form of person, right? One person, two people. But people also means the people of a nation or the people of an ethnic group, Mingzu. So if you're talking about more than one of these groups, you can say peoples. So like another famous phrase we have is the peoples of the world. So all of the different kinds of not kinds like different countries, different nations, different ethnicities of people in the world. So if you can have peoples, then you can also have persons. This is usually seen in legal documents, when you don't want to talk about, when you're actually you're talking about individual people but you're now talking about a group of individual people. You would say persons. So there's more than one person, but we're still supposed to be thinking of them as individual people, not as a group. So far so good, OK? OK, so um, next we have um, food and animals. These are often considered substances for some strange reason. So like beef, pork, rice. If it's a food, you can't count it. Animals, uh, you know, some people say some animals are uncountable, but I prefer thinking of it as some animals have the same form of plural as singular. So like sheep, the plural of sheep is sheep. Um, so I think it helps if you don't think of this as uncountable. These are animals are countable, but the way that you count them is just the same as one animal. Um, for some reason, the word fish is it's not supposed to be countable, right? Many fish. But for some reason, a lot of people like to say fishes. This is technically not correct, but because language is decided by native speakers, if enough native speakers say fishes, then it becomes correct. To me, it looks like this is slowly changing, so it's something worth paying attention to. If in the future more and more people say fishes, then you should also start saying fishes, but not yet. OK. Um, next, we have group nouns. Group nouns are countable, right? A family. It's a group of people, but you're not counting the people, you're counting the group. So a family is one group. Or like uh, an audience, one group. A staff. Staff is everybody working in this place. Put together is one group. Uh, faculty. Faculty is the same as staff, except everybody is a teacher. So sta uh, faculty in Chinese, I guess, is 教, 教师群, something like that. 
So for group nouns like this, American English counts the group. Uh, so all of these words in American English, you would use the word is because I said one faculty, one staff. But British English uh, depends on the context. If you're talking about a family as one group, you would say a family is. But if you're talking about a family of people and they every person does something different or like they're talking about something together like in the idea in the image if you need more than one person british english would use plural a family are a family are talking about where to go on vacation there is there are two exceptions the first exception in both American and British English, the police are always plural. The police are, the cops are. Like if you're talking about the police force, right? The second exception is even in American English, if the grammar ends in the plural, then even if you only have a singular group, you must say are. Right, so my family, I only have one family, and yet are all teachers plural? Therefore, you have to use plural verb. My family are all teachers. This is even true for American English. Questions? I think I'm finished. These are countable and uncountable nouns. Do you have questions? OK, so as you know, most nouns are made plural by adding S. There are a few exceptions that I don't think are worth mentioning until we come across them in the practice. So let's do the practice. Please look at the new handout. So it starts easy. Um, if these nouns need to be made plural, please make them plural. Nine questions because the first one has been done. I'll give you three minutes.
OK, let's compare answers. Number. Two. Airplane seats are narrow and uncomfortable. Notice how I said this word uncomfortable. You pronounce it differently than it's spelled. Uncomfortable. Number three, science students do laboratory experiments in their class. If it is a different kind of student, I think you you can use singular experiment, do a laboratory experiment. But for science students, they do lots of experiments, so it should be plural. Also notice how I said this word, laboratory. Laboratory. Yeah. Number four. OK, there are a few answers. You can say house flies are a dangerous pest. OK, here, let's do it this way. House flies are or you can say the house fly is as you know the kind of animal you can say dangerous pests or you can say a dangerous pest okay hang on let me let me see how to explain this better if you use the housefly is, then it has to be singular, a dangerous pest. But if you say houseflies are, then you can use both. You can use either singular or plural, a dangerous pest or dangerous pests. Here's the thing. If it's singular, then it has to be singular. I think that's pretty straightforward. But are you talking about one kind of animal or are you talking about this entire group of animals? And on the right, are you saying that they are all one kind of pest, which means annoying animal? Or are they, when you put them all together and you like face a lot of them, are they dangerous pests, plural? So the meaning is clear. We know what this sentence is trying to say, but English asks you to place the emphasis either on the kind of animal and the kind of pest, or actually thinking about a lot of animals being like individually pests. Second part of the answer. They carry germs. Uh, just my she dream. Uh, germs in English can be singular, but I can't think of a reason we would have to talk about only one germ. So usually it's plural germs. So if you say the housefly is a dangerous pest, then this must be it. It carries. But if you say houseflies are, then you can say they carry. Number five, computers cannot think. They need, you can say a human operator, or you can say they need human operators. Either one is fine. Again, do you want to emphasize the idea that each computer has a human operator? Or are you putting computers together as a group? And so you also need a group of human operators. Meaning is the same, but the emphasis is different. OK, let's take a short break. We'll come back to finish the rest of these questions. Which group is presenting today? Are you group five, six? OK, great. Um, is group seven here? 
Could group seven please come to see me? And uh, Zhang Boren, you come? Zhang Boren, you come? Please come to see me.
OK, now let's welcome group six. Hello everyone, welcome to our presentation. We are group six and going to show you the weather. We are with those certain prepositions. The, the following four sentences all means that the speaker wants to express his ad admiration of someone. Unlike me, whose whose eyes become to help help helpless stream in flood near a slight onion, make it impossible to see what I'm doing when I cook. Chef Om Omar on TV cuts onions without shedding a tear. Even, divi even divine from our high board, Jamily hits the pool splashlessly. Detec detective Papazin can usually identify a photo that that's been doctored, even if it looks genuine to everyone else. The pharaohs made people of all colors, backgrounds, and personality types feel welcome at their home. Though each of sentence, each of these sentences employs a transitive verb in the active voice, cuts can identify made each one stop, sort of naming the means by which its action is accomplished. So as we can see from the last slide, each sentence didn't show how the actions was completed. Like the sentence, Chef Omar cuts onions without shedding a tear, but how? So we can use the word somehow in the beginning of the sentence. And it can also make the, strong, make the tone stronger. So somehow Chef Omar keeps from crying while cutting onions. Somehow Jamel dives into pools without displacing water. Childlike drawings with missing limbs. The other compare simple drawing by children to a world where essential details are missing. Reflect reflecting a lack of understanding of how the depicted action are achieved and suggesting a sense of awe. Number two, the importance of in energy and energy. The passage highlights the significance of energy and energy in achieve goal and getting things done. The third is Visualizing means in children's art. In children's art, the development of agency eventually involves including upper limbs with, with hands in drawings, indicating a recognition of the means to achieve the depicted actions. The law of language in conveying agency in Writing and speaking conveying agency includes describing the how of a task, either for complete sentences, in planning the process, or for grammatical elements like prepositional how to phrase phrases that detail the steps and tools required for accomplish. A task. Example of a prepositional how to phrase 
the passage provides an example of a preposition or how to press. Illustrating how it names the steps and tools needed to make a take task con con conceivable, such as transformer managers to cut onions without shutting a tear by breathing only for his month for the duration. These points emphasize the importance of understanding and conveying the means to achieve goals and the crucial role of energy and agency agents in beating things down. Next, I'd like to discuss the remarkable abilities of Detective Papazian when it comes to identifying doctored photographs. This detective has a unique method that focuses on closely studying the shadows within these photos and ensuring their consistency. The author suggests that by breaking down complex operations like photo and the analysis into their hidden parts. We can bring these operations closer to our own abilities. Furthermore, we learned that adding instrumental phrases in speech and writing can be an empowering tool for reporting deeds worthy of imitation. This highlights the significance of using language effectively to convey our thoughts and ideas. Lastly, the concept that sentences which only name an action without explaining how it's done are considered incomplete resonates with us. Thank you. Okay, thank you, group six. Um, I want to remind group seven that um, in addition to summarizing the chapter, you should also tell us whether you agree with the author about his different points and why you agree or disagree. Okay, and uh, you know, before I forget, one more thing I should announce. Uh, you may have received a class email last week. Um, the Department of Applied English is still looking for people to join the freshman choir competition, Dai He Chang Bisai. Uh, if you join the freshman choir competition, I will give you a slightly higher grade in this class. If you are not a freshman or you are not from the Department of Applied English, you can still go ask whether there is some job you can do that is not singing. For example, maybe you can be the conductor, maybe you can play the piano or something. Um, the rules say only freshmen can sing, but other students can do other jobs. Um, and I will also give you a higher grade if you do something else. So if you join the first day of the first day, no matter if you are the first day, if you have your name on the list, I will give you a higher grade. So I encourage you to join. Okay, thank you. Group 8, thank you for coming. Let's 
continue discussing page one. Number six, there are approximately 250,000 different kinds of flower or flowers in the world. Again, both are acceptable, depends on where you want to put the emphasis. Hi, I just realized something. So uh, group six, sorry, I didn't record the text of your presentation, but everyone online heard your voice. OK, num uh, so in this case, this sentence begins with a no subject. In Chinese, this uh, sentence would say. Yo, blah, blah, blah. Sentences that in Chinese begin with yo in English do not begin with have. They begin with there. There are it just means yo. Um, so is there singular or plural? Wrong question. The real subject is the first noun, kinds. So this is plural because kinds is plural. Number seven, newspaper reporters have, again, you can say a high pressure job or you can say high pressure jobs. Depends on whether you want to emphasize the entire job or all the different things that a newspaper reporter has to do. Number eight, good telephone manners are important. This is the only answer. When you mean uh, polite actions and polite words, you have to use the plural manners. Manner singular just means uh, behavior or like style of action. In Chinese, we call this yi tai. So the meaning of the word is different whether you use the singular or the plural. Number nine, I bought two theater tickets for Thursday evening's performance of A Doll's House. Um, notice how it spells theater. This is the British spelling. In American English, we spell T-E-R. I don't know why they used the British spelling. This is American grammar textbook. Number 10. Our daily lives have changed in many ways in the past 100 years. We no longer need to use oil lamps or candles in our house houses. Raise our own chickens or build daily. I'm I'm gonna say a daily fire for cooking. So a few things to point out. First of all, this chicken is not talking about food. It's talking about the animal. So you can count chickens. But if you're talking about the food, you cannot count it. I want to have chicken, uncountable. Second point is all of these are plural, but I said a daily fire, and this is because usually uh, the situation is you make one fire every day in the past and you keep it burning for the whole day. So if you say daily fires, it's possible to misunderstand the meaning as saying each family has to make many fires every day. So we emphasize one fire, even though we're talking about many families. 
In fact, the entire series can all be singular if you want. Our daily life has changed in many ways. OK, this has to be plural many ways in the past 100 years, plural, but we no longer need to use. Um, yeah, these all have to be plural. What am I saying? You have more than one lamp in your house. You have more than one candle in your house. Uh, house can be singular. If you're talking about. Um, our life, then house can be singular. Or build a daily fire for cooking. OK, questions? So when we started, it seems like, you know, this seems pretty easy, right? Is there one or are there many? But in fact, we see that sometimes the difference is not very big. Depends on whether you want to emphasize. The situation of having many of the same kind or whether you want to emphasize that all of these are only of one kind. And also to avoid ambiguity, OK, next set of questions. Same thing, but sometimes the sentence is correct. So some are wrong, some are right. There are nine questions. I'll give you another three minutes. OK, let's compare answers. Number two. Boxes. Have six sides. You can also say a box has six sides. Number three. Big cities have many problems. You can also say a big city or the big city. The big city is talking about a specific environment in general, like abstractly, this abstract environment called the big city. 
Number four, bananas grow in hot, humid areas. You can also say the banana grows as a kind of fruit. Number five, insects don't have noses. You can also say an insect doesn't have a nose. Also works. Number six, lambs are the offspring of sheep. Um, because sheep looks the same in singular and plural, it is correct, but it looks kind of weird if you say a lamb is the offspring of a sheep. It's correct, but it, it's kind of weird. So plural, it would be the best answer. Number seven, libraries keep books on their shelves. Yes, their shelves. Um, you can also change libraries to a library or the library, but the second and third ones have to be plural. A library has more than one book and it has more than one shelf. Eight, parents support their child works. Maybe both parents together only have one child. So you can also say a parent supports. OK, I, I should write this. A parent supports. What should the pronoun be? Sorry, what should the, the pronoun adjective be? His child, her child. One parent. You can also use their. If you don't know the gender. 不知道性别的话，可以用 they 当单数指称，不知性别。But the thing to remember about using the word they in this way is that it always takes a plural verb. For example, Dylan is gender fluid, has xing bi bu gu ding. So you would use the word they. But even though Dylan is one person, they is a plural noun, so you have to use the plural like. This use of the plural is not reflecting reality, it is reflecting grammar. It's a grammatical plural. This is a full shu zi wen fa gai nian. 即便只称的人是一个人，但是如果用 they 的话，都要用复数动词，单纯是文法一致性问题。So if you don't know the gender, or you don't want to say one gender, you can use they. And if anybody says no, you can't, just just tell them your grammar teacher says you can. And also Shakespeare used they like this as well, and I'm also the Shakespeare teacher. Number nine, Indonesia has several active volcanoes. Number 10, baboons are big monkeys. They have, I'm going to say a large head and sharp teeth. They eat leaves, roots, insects, and eggs. So the only one that is singular is head. Again, this is to make sure that the reader does not misunderstand and think that baboons have more than one head. 
For the same reason, you can also change baboon and monkey to singular, but you have to keep the rest of these plural. Because even for one singular baboon, it will have more than one tooth and it will eat more than one leaf, root, insect, and egg. So baboons, monkeys, a baboon is a big monkey. The baboon is a big monkey. OK, questions? OK, next page. Same thing, another ten question, another nine questions. Uh, so three more minutes. OK, let's compare answers. And let's hope the computer can keep up with me this time. Number two. Birds hatch from eggs. I'm going to say this is the only answer because there are many different kinds of birds. Number three, baby birds stay in their nest for several weeks or months. Their 
I'm going to say we don't know whether how many parents. I'm going to say based on the picture, one parent. Their parent. That doesn't make sense. Their their parents feed them until they can fly. Or you can say a baby bird stays in its nest for several weeks or months. Its parent or parents, I guess, feeds or feed it until it can fly. Number four, people eat chicken eggs. Chicken eggs. Some animals eat bird eggs. In fact, humans also eat bird eggs. We are animals. Number five, foxes and snakes are natural enemies. That's not how you spell snake. Are natural enemies of birds. Or you can say the fox and the snake are natural enemies, still plural. There's these are two, right? So this is plural of the bird. They eat birds and their eggs. Number six, some birds eat only seeds and plants. Other birds eat mainly insects and earthworms chewing. This is the only answer because it says some. So it has to be plural. Number seven. Weeds are. Unwanted plants. They prevent farm crops. And garden flowers from growing properly. Birds help farmers by eating uh, weed seeds and harmful insects. This is the only answer. As the question says, a weed is not a specific type of plant. Any plant you don't want is called a weed. Therefore, it should be plural. If this is plural, then this is plural, then this is plural. It's all plural. The one exception is here. Because it's not talking about weeds. It's talking about seeds. Weed is used to modify seeds. This technically is a complex noun. Has a fuha means it. Weed seeds. What kind of seeds? Weed seeds. Uh, but everything else is plural. Number eight. OK, you can use plural, right? Rats, rabbits and. Mice. Can cause huge. Losses. On farms. By eating stored crops. By the way, a crop is just a kind of plant that you want to grow. Certain big birds like hawks help farmers by hunting these animals. OK, so here you can say the rat, the rabbit, and the mouse as three kinds of animals. But this bird has to be plural because it says certain. Certain means some, so it's plural. Farmer, you can also say the farmer. If you're saying the rat, you can say the farmer. Number nine, 
the feather. This should be feathers. The feathers of certain kinds of bird. OK, this could be singular or plural. It, there, there's no difference. Certain kind of bird, certain kind of bird. Sorry, certain kinds of bird or certain kinds of birds. Both are fine. Are used in pillows and. Mattresses. These have to be plural because you're talking about products. The soft feathers. From. You can say the goose or you can say geese. Are often used for pillows. Goose feathers. Are also used in winter. Jackets. So this is goose because you're not counting the goose, you're counting the feathers. It's another complex noun. What kind of feathers? Goose feathers. Some people will say that feather should be singular because it's a type of body part. But because here we're talking about pillows and mattresses, each pillow, each mattress is filled with many feathers. So using plural, I think, makes more sense. Number 10. The wing feathers from geese were used as pens from the 6th century to the 19th century when steel pens were invented. Or you can say the wing feather from the goose was used as a pen. Blah, 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 when the steel pen was invented. So as you can see from these practices, the real important point is to be consistent and to be clear. If you choose to use plural, always use plural until uh, maybe it would lead to confusion. If you choose to use singular, always use singular unless it might lead to confusion. But for most cases, either one is fine. Just be consistent. OK, do you have questions about these 10? These nine? OK, um, so for homework. Please do. Up to page. Up to the end of page six, please finish up to page six. And next week we will have a presentation from group seven. If you have not yet handed in your uh, peer review sheet, please remember to do that. The faster I collect all of the peer review sheets for a certain group, the faster I can give you your midterm grade. So the peer review sheet is on Moodle here. OK, see you next week.